And welcome to Rumors Comedy Cast, episode number 46. We've got headliner Julian McCullough here. Julian. Two camera shoot for a podcast. And how was the first night in Winnipeg? First time uh, in Winnipeg. Whew, man, they were, uh, they seem really grateful to be indoors. So they're very like welcoming yeah. and happy to have something to do inside. First time you've experienced this cold? Oh my God, I've never been anywhere this cold. It's, what is it? What did you say it is? Negative 10? No, what is it today? Ne- negative 30 with the wind chill. What? Yeah. Um, I said on stage that coming here, getting booked here was like answering a Craigslist ad where they murder you when you show up. (laughs) It was so not cool. Uh, But, you know, I can say I did it or whatever as long as I make it through. You were telling me before that uh, if you walk around for five minutes, you'll get frostbite on your hands, which I was like, yeah, right. But then I totally believe you. We just went to Safeway and almost and I, I got it. Yeah. Exposed skin. It's crazy. It's like Everest. Yeah. But and you say you never get used to it, so I don't understand what's happening here. Well, I think it's all perspective forms your reality, right? So if you're happy the, about it, you're like, oh, I've got stuff to do. But well, I think it's like the key is to never go anywhere else. Like if you see, you know, like civilization or whatever, <laughs> you're going to want to stay there. So as long as you never visit like a place that's normal, then you think this is great. Then that will, yeah. You know? You have nothing to compare it to. Yeah. Like in Russia, they're like that, right? They're like, we just drink vodka until we die. That's the whole attitude. And it's but you guys here. are really nice. Yeah. We are? Yeah. You're nicer than Russians. Okay. Yeah. Have you, have you done a lot of shows in Russia? But that's, I think it's, a lot of that has to do with you guys never had Stalin or Hitler invade you. So I think that's probably got a lot to do with it. Yeah. We did have... Uh, has there uh, ever been a Canadian war? 1812. Was it 1812 or 1867? French and Indian. That sounds, def- that, that sounds up your alley. French and Indian sounds Canadian. Yeah. Okay. Winnipeg did have a, I'm really a, good at history. A, a day where they had um, a, a foe or a mock-up, and I think it was during World War II, of what would actually happen if, if uh, Germany invaded. And they had people dressed like Nazis. What? And, like, take over they the did main that here? strip. Yeah. Why? Fun. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> the whole town was like, hey, let's, uh, let's see what hey, would happen. Hey, never forget. Never forget. I mean, if it had happened over there, it could happen in Canada, which is, like, not true at all. It turned into like that Princeton uh, prison. Princeton prison. What was that? I don't know what you're talking. You're gonna about. edit this out until I get it properly. <laughs> but the Princeton. It was like a. Um, psych study. What was it? A psych study. A psych study. Yeah, they did it in. I think it was Princeton. What was the psych study? And it was they had uh, people, students. They're all students, and they had to uh, replicate a prison. And it got to the point where the people that were uh, supposed to be guards, who were all students, and, and the prisoners were students as well, but the people that were guards became so empowered and, and like thought that they were guards so much they had to stop the study because people were being abused. Really? Yeah. Who knew that Ivy League kids were dickheads? I mean, you don't need a study to f- figure that out. <laughs> that they want to rule the world? Who knew? So, born in Philly, mm-hmm. and then you've kind of been... Birthplace of America all over not technically true uh yes i've been all over i'm we i was new in school nine times growing up vagabond parents bohemian artists lifestyle a lot of turtlenecks black turtlenecks a lot of leonard cohen yeah uh and a lot of bob dylan it was uh you know there were crazy times when i was nine through well two through 11 is well, 13 was like all like always different like i knew school all the time yeah. So I was always making new friends, and I wasn't, like, good at – I wasn't, like, an alpha male, so I became funny to not get my ass kicked, and it still didn't always work. Did you keep friends from, from any of the uh, – no, no, I haven't stayed in touch. Uh, the, the last people I stayed in touch with were my high school friend, Craig. He still talks to me. Okay. That's about it. How's he doing? He's great. He's an architect in Philly. Oh, good for him. Yeah, he's doing really good. Okay. He's, like, a well-adjusted guy. Any states that you haven't been to yet? I haven't been to a bunch. I haven't been to the – I say a bunch. I haven't been to Montana, I don't think, or Wyoming, or I've been to the Dakotas, I think. Uh, I've never been to, like, Idaho. Like, who's been to Idaho? Have you been to Idaho? I've been to... I've been what to were you Idaho. doing in Idaho? Soccer tournament. Soccer tournament. Same point, Idaho. Uh, yeah. So I don't even know why you would go to Idaho if not for something like that or, like, a potato festival. Yeah. Cool. Uh But I have a friend from Idaho, Ryan Hamilton, is a comedian. Yeah, he's been here. He's hilarious. He's from Idaho. um, And he has very funny material about how much it sucks. (laughs) 
And that's that where we're going to probably put it. We're just going to stop that. <laughs> um, no, I haven't been to every state. I've driven cross country a couple times, but I've not been. I just, you know, you go straight through. You say you're going to explore once you start, and then you're like, fuck this. Let's get out of it. Let's just get there. Yeah. What's your favorite state? Um, places I like that I've been that are like, hey, if, if everything goes wrong, I'll come and hide out here. Or like Louisville. Louisville. Okay. They get mad if you say it wrong. It's very cool, very cheap, very hip. Uh, that's in Kentucky. I always forget if you guys know anything about us. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky's cool. Wait, quiz me. Just do three cities. Three cities? Yeah, off the top of your Are head. Are you ready? Don't give me easy ones, though. Yeah. I won't. Um, how about... No, that one's too easy. How about... <laughs> Jersey City. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, how about... Oh, 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 here we go. Dover. All right, you're right. We don't. We just don't know. Capital of Delaware. Uh, Delaware is a state. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Their postcards say Delaware, and it's just a picture of emptiness. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, there's some of those states that uh, they're aware of it. Yeah. Oh, good mm-hmm. for them. Kansas is pretty empty. Mm-hmm. Most of it, not all of it. Kansas City is awesome. Actually, Kansas City is another one that I love. Yeah. If you're in Kansas City, it's cool. Kansas is like panic attack because it's like you just look well you're used to it you guys look out this front door and it's like miles of just flat land that go nowhere and you could die anywhere and that's what kansas is like huh it's terrifying so we'd get along in kansas yeah i think you'd feel totally comfortable there have you ever been to new york city nope have you ever been to new orleans i haven't been to a lot of places in the states and and the places that i have been would be like quarter and i'm not just talking about bourbon street it's like it's a different country there. It's the most different place in America that I've ever been that doesn't feel American. The accent makes no sense. It's Cajun, you know? And then it's like you can just drink anywhere throughout the city, anywhere. There's no restrictions. So people are just drinking everywhere. In, in any time of the day? Any time of the day. And the bars no, almost never close. I think they close at 7 a.m. Is the nightlife for just like an hour? Year round? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It never gets that cold, you know? I think it stopped for like a week when they had that storm, but pretty much it's been, that was insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. So is there a certain demographic that then goes to Vegas and a certain demographic that goes to New Orleans? Oh, yeah. I mean, your, your, uh, your typical basic douchebag goes to Vegas and your, uh, your wild child goes to, I mean, if you're really into weird stuff, yeah. like voodoo, go to New Orleans. It's awesome. Well, what's crazy is they have this whole, all this like old French culture. So they have like, a street will have a perfect French antique store that is like the paint is perfect and it's got all this old amazing treasure inside and then the next building is a brothel. Hmm. And you can drink in either one. <laughs> it's awesome. And I've only been there once and I'll never go back. No. I it won't was survive. Too much? No, I don't drink anymore and if I go back there I'll die. Yeah, so let's get into the meat and potatoes. You don't you don't drink anymore. No. When no. I've I've uh, I've stopped several times. Uh, the longest I went was 4 years. But when I was like, basically since from 15 to like 29, I just floored it. Yeah. You know, because I never had a day job after college. So, or university, you guys call it university. Uh, I never had a, a day job, so I never had to slow down, you know. And so, you know, and then in New York City, you don't have to have a car. So it's just like, nothing matters, you know. Sure. Yeah. Get drunk all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> it took me 10 years to realize this might be slowing my career down. <laughs> waking up at 6 p.m. every day. What was your drink of choice? It changes. If you're a true alcoholic, your stomach starts freaking out about certain things, so you have to keep moving. You know, yeah. you have to keep changing your thing. But towards the end, I was drinking scotch and club soda, like a like a 60-year-old man. And I would drink, like, high balls of scotch and club, and I would drink all night at a comedy club and drink all of their sco- – like, I would finish their bottle of scotch that was on the bar. Yeah. And um, I'd mix it up with beer here and there just to slow down. Well, it's dangerous to drink in the States because they free pour there, right? Yes. Like in Canada, it's always not not every state, glass. but like most states, yeah, it's a yeah. free shot. It's like whatever, what it's basically whatever the bartender's opinion of you is, that's how strong your shot is. Sure. Yeah. So you must have been uh, highly favored as uh, you know. You know, depending on where I went, yeah. Plus, if you're a comedian, you know, you don't get charged for anything. I mean, here they charge half price, but I'm not complaining because <laughs> I'm not drinking this time. But if I was, you guys would hear about it. So, when did you? I guess like when was the first time you decided to go sober? I missed my friend's wedding that I was supposed to be in. <laughs> I, Is he a friend still? 
you were friendly. Yeah. We made up in Florida last year when I did a gig there. Um, but we were in New Jersey at college. We were college friends. And then everybody split up after school. And we were like, I was probably like 25 or 26 or something. No, no, no. Sorry. I was like 28. And he was getting married and I was supposed to be in the wedding. And, that, and I had a flight out of New York at 6 a.m. And I hadn't gotten to bed before 5 a.m. in a long time. And I was freaking out. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to wake up in time. So I'm just going to stay up. But I didn't have any drugs. So I drank a whole bottle of tequila, passed out like 20 minutes before I was supposed to leave my house, and then woke up when I was supposed to be landing in Florida. Oh, shit. So they're like all texting me, where are you? And I'm in bed and I can't even move. Yeah. And that's when I was like, that, is, that wasn't even when I decided to quit. What made me quit was the girl I was dating at the time, not very seriously, but she, I, I liked her. She goes, I go, hey, do you want to hang out tonight? She goes, I thought you were supposed to be in Florida in your friend's wedding. And I go, oh, yeah, I kind of got too drunk and missed it. And she goes, oh, you know what? I don't think we should hang out anymore. I didn't know you were that kind of drunk. And I was like, <laughs> oh. Double whammy. Yeah, and she was like 21. Yeah, okay. They're not supposed to talk like that to their elders. No. So. Or see that ever. Right. They're supposed to be still impressionable. So I kind of owe her shock and horror to the first time I, I ever got sober. Do you still know her? No, I could probably find her, but that would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> I heard of a study in the 60s that was done with LSD, though. And it was only done with alcoholics. And yeah, the, I know about all that stuff. The success rate was 50%. Mm, I don't know enough about it. I know, like... For the rest of their lives kind of thing. It's like, did they really follow those people until they died of natural causes and make sure they never drank again? Like, I don't know that that was true. I mean, if I was an alcoholic, that might be but the this best is program why... to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was still available, it'd be the first one I'd try. Yeah. I'd be like, which one is the recreational drug cure to alcoholism? <laughs> I tried to cure alcoholism with cocaine for many years, and it uh, was not successful. Yeah. Yeah, but I made sure first. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> when did you start doing coke? Uh, oh, I was pretty. I was pretty late in life. Yeah, I was like twenty-five, I think. You know, past when you're supposed to know better. Yeah, you know. But uh, I don't know. I did it for a couple of years when I was broke, and then and it was manageable. And then as soon as I made a little bit of money in New York City, and I got my own guy, then it got out of control. Mm. It also saved my life a lot because you drink so much. Like, if I hadn't had Coke, I would have fallen asleep on a subway somewhere and ended up in fucking Coney Island at 4 in the morning and gotten murdered. So, okay. you know, with Coke, you can get home. Hey, with Coke, you can get home. Yeah. Right. You know that Phil Collins song, Take Me Home? Yeah. That's about cocaine. Is it? Nope. Oh. Okay. Could have left it there. <laughs> <laughs> so when you first, like, because you'd been doing comedy for a while at this point, uh -huh. when you first decided to, to uh, get sober, how was that transition? Did you, did you find, like, do you It was terrifying in general, but uh, the comedy, yeah, it scared me to do comedy completely. So I've been, I've been buzzed or drunk doing comedy solidly for five years. So to stop it completely and just go up there so completely sober was, was terrifying. But I got used to it fairly quickly. I yeah. mean, you know, within a week, I was like, oh, this is fine. You know, and it, it made me so much better right away. Because I, when I was drunk, I would, like, I, I would fall into fits of darkness and, like, do jokes that not very, I thought were very funny, but um, most people can't relate to. So it's like, what's the point? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like being in a death metal band. That's the best one. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys are great at that. But there's just, you have 50 fans. That's all of them. <laughs> uh, you're the number one death metal band. But, uh. So I, when I quit, I, I, I was able to relate to more people with my material and, and be a little more honest, and that helped a lot. Did you, take, did you find that you maybe were afraid to take risks a little bit more? Oh, I took way fewer risks drunk than I did sober. Oh, really? Yeah, because when you're drunk, you just want to kill. You don't want to, like, expand mm -hmm. or grow, you know? You just want to, like, feel good up there. It's weird. It's hard to explain, but I don't know. Have you ever performed drunk? Hammered. <laughs> yeah. This is the first podcast I've done not drinking. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. How are you yeah. feeling? Uh, it's a little bit weird at first. Yeah. You know? Um, I mean, this is what a first date is like for two people that don't drink. It's uh, a little stilted, very yeah. quiet, and um, probably just silently blow each other later. Sure. Yeah. That'll work. I don't know. I, I feel like, I guess, that uh, the silent and, and the pauses certainly are more... Pr uh, pronounced yeah well when you're drunk and things go silent you're just like taking a breather and you don't notice it because your ears are like wah, wah, wah. but then when you're sober you're like um 
it's just like you got to live in that uncomfortability but whatever so what do you think it was attributed to do you think it's hereditary genetics or do you think it's like you know i guess maybe problems that uh i've actually never thought too hard about that and what's weird is i'm like obsessed with what makes people tick so i'm like interested but for some reason because there's no definitive answer i don't really think about it that much because it's not going to help me in any way to know you know my parents didn't really drink so my grandparents did but um no i have my own theories and i I, what's cool about getting older is you can just kind of like create your own stories about your own history and be like that's the truth you know what I mean? You can, it's called rewriting history. It's great. So uh, you can be like a victim if you want, or you can be like the hero of your story, or you can be an asshole, but very few people choose asshole. We might be the last generation that gets to do that. Why is that? Oh, because everything's recorded? Everything's recorded now <laughs> at this point, yeah. Yeah, kids are going to grow up and be like, my parents were so mean to me, and they're like, actually, here's you at Chuck E. Cheese every year for your birthday. Any embarrassing <laughs> Do you guys videos? have Chuck E. Cheese? We have a rat that it sells pizza. We children. do have Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, you do? I don't okay. know if we have one anymore. We used to have one in Winnipeg. No. What happened? He froze. I just don't think it was as popular as, you know, because arcades. You guys didn't want a rat selling you pizza? big arcade thing. And then, I don't know, kids have video games that are way better than that. Oh, now. I know. Yeah, it's really sad. But video games can't make you pizza. Yet. Yet. So was there, what, what's, what's uh, any embarrassing videos out there? Is there anything that you do have online that's... Uh... Oh, thank God. No, I don't think. I haven't seen them. Uh, I mean, there's, some, there's a couple of pictures from college. Yeah. Yeah, there's a picture. There's a pretty funny picture of me sleeping in a pantry with no pillow. And I'm sleeping on a can of hot cocoa, like the powder, as yep. a pillow. Which is not better than the floor. <laughs> so that's uh, that one's kind of funny. Where would one find this picture? Oh, it's a hard it's a hard copy. It's oh. not online. Oh, it's so not online. yeah, I'm old as shit. Okay. So luckily <laughs> you'd have to find it in somebody's attic somewhere, you know what I mean? It's not it's not out there. So if any Julian's friends are watching want to send in some material that we can just photoshop into later. Yeah. Because we do actually have a big uh, following of your friends. <laughs> yeah, specifically. Yeah. I hope not. I don't want my college friend to hear how sh- shitty I was about his wedding. I mean, he knows, but, you know. Did you ever lose any work? No. I came close one time because, well, here's the problem. is like I was, I was one of those drunks you could never tell, like no matter how hammered I was. I had to be pretty hammered before you could even tell because I don't slur. I don't repeat myself. Um, You're a cool drunk. I am. And, it was, and to the point where, like, the next day – They'd be like, thank you for landing the plane yesterday. And I'd be like, why did you let me do that? They're like, you seemed like you knew what you were doing. Um, that movie Flight with Denzel Washington? Yeah. That's about me. Uh, but they uh, – uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so I was very cool. So, you know, luckily I don't have, like, a bad when – I, when I, the first time I said oh, I should stop drinking, a lot of people around me were like, why? Yeah. You're going to suck now, you know? Well, and I think that comes with the cool guy is that, you know – People probably didn't really realize that it was as big of a problem. Oh yeah, it's all in, it's all internal. Because you weren't an asshole, you were like fun. Yeah, it was you fun. Were fun, Julian. It was super fun. People want to hang until around. until I would always hit the wall at like 3 a.m. So whoever was with me at 3 a.m. got the full brunt of all of the alcohol <laughs> I drank that night. When I would finally let the guard down and just like be whatever. Yeah. So there were a few um, unfortunate uh, ladies who had to hear me cry about my mom, for example, on okay. a one night stand. It's not really one night stand if there's no sex and you just cry about your mom. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> what is that called? Pathetic. Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. So, that's a true story. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what, uh, maybe I shouldn't go there to ask that. Yeah, probably but, not. Uh, huh, wow. I mean, it's a comedy podcast, right? Or is this like a. Yeah, I don't know. I Are don't you know breaking me I... down to build me back up again? Is that what this is? I was is? hoping so. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't really want to get into comedy. Really what <clears throat> I'm hoping to do is Oh, to God, I don't want to talk about comedy. If you talk about comedy on this thing, I'll leave right now. I just want to, like, get out the worst secrets of everyone. Right. And then use that as a platform to elevate myself. Oh, you're like 50 Cent. That's kind how he became a famous rapper. Really? Yeah, he would, he would make diss tracks about, like, behind-the-scenes secrets that people weren't supposed to know about bigger rappers. And then he got big himself, and nobody cared about his music anymore. Hmm. Huh. So... Cautionary tale. Yeah. You and 50 Cent are like the same person. I'm cool with that, though. <laughs> like, you got shot nine times. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, that's like, maybe I'm the problem. You know what I mean? Like, if you get shot nine times, it's hard to be like, that guy was an asshole. You're like, yeah. I, I'm probably, I probably went a little too far. Like, I don't know guns because we're in Canada, but I, I assume a clip is usually eight. Well, it would take you guys, like, 20 minutes to shoot somebody nine times because you have, like, rifles. Yeah. You know? The old... Uh, They'd have to, like, keep running in the field and you'd, like, shoot them in the leg and then <laughs> the butt and then, the, you know? Nine holes. I mean, that's a lot of blood. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's a tough dude. Get rich so, or die trying. Yeah. Um, my career has been more like get rich or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It doesn't work out. <laughs> so you've got, uh, you know, you've got some good perspective about you now that you're sober. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you miss drinking? No. Not right now. I don't miss it. I, you know, life is, uh, it, when you're when you're making good decisions, President Obama did a speech not too long ago where he used a, uh, like a theme that a lot of, that's like an old theme but it's really profound and it's basically every every person has a, a bad wolf and a good wolf in their mind and whichever one you feed is the one that's gonna be is gonna break the chain and and uh, if you feed the good wolf you don't miss it you don't miss the bad shit you yeah. know but if you start feeding the bad thing it starts to feel like romantic and you know whatever so I'm trying to like make a series of good decisions so I don't feel like it's a good idea again. But I'm not really worried about it. I'm, I'm done. I'm exhausted. Can you go out and hang out with people there isn't, that are drinking? There isn't something... Yes, I can absolutely go out with people yeah. that are drinking. It doesn't bother me at all. Like, um, It's funny because I get to see you know, what I never got to see before, which is... <laughs> I, you know, you get to be this... It's like having a superpower yeah. when you're sober and everybody else is drunk. Um, but yeah, I don't... I don't miss it. I've did enough. Like I, I have the memories. I don't. I don't need to, to go back. Sure. Yeah. I don't. I think the only thing I haven't done is Ibiza. That looks fun. You know, where they have like, bubble bath, clubs where you go and everybody's in bubbles. Yeah. It's kind of nineties, but it looked pretty fun at the time. Like the Venga Boys. Yeah. Yeah. A party bus. <laughs> I never did stuff like that because I'm not a piece of shit. But yeah. uh, no, I'm joking. I don't want to do that. But yeah, I, I did everything I want to do. I'm fine. Good. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm glad I don't smoke cigarettes because you people. I, <laughs> when we got to the club, there's a guy outside vaping, and I'm like, "You're sitting in negative 30 degree weather to vape." Like, you never smoke. Imagine cigarettes. that discipline for something worth it. Never <laughs> had cigarettes. No, never liked them. Tried. Really? I kept forgetting I'd have one. And I'd leave it on a couch and almost burn a house down. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to give them up pretty quick. Huh. Yeah. I would think that most alcoholics have dabbled with cigarettes. Or oh, still yeah, smoke. sure, you know. But I just never I tried to like it and I just Do you have never did. still? Mm, for a while I gambled yeah. and then I kind of got sick of that. I don't really like doing that anymore cuz I'm not I'm not good at it. I don't like I'm not disciplined about it, so I just would lose. Yeah. So I got tired of that. Usually I go to food. I'll eat like really gross food. But I'm not even doing that anymore. I think I'm too old. My body's like, we can't do this shit anymore, no matter what it is. And I'm like, fine. So now it's like Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about it. What about you? What's your vice if you're not drinking? I don't want to say because my parents listen to the podcast. <laughs> they told me it was, they said that I did horribly too. What do you mean? They, I went home for Christmas this year and they, did I say this last time too? Yeah, okay. Well, they can listen to it again. My parents were like, hey, we really like your comedy, but the podcast is, is horrible. <laughs> and I knew that they were being honest yeah. because they gave me the compliments. And, and at first I was like, oh, are they just being Did they like have any parents? like constructive criticism or they just were like, it just sucks? No, they just thought I was horrible. Maybe because I was drinking a lot during oh. the podcast. I, I felt like it loosened me up a little bit, uh -huh. but I don't know. I feel like you are you have a hard time being able to tell when I'm done talking. Totally. Yeah. Because so. sometimes you do a pause, and then you'll start talking again, and right. I feel like I'm cutting off. Well, that's because you took too long, and I was like, I'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're Danny's parents, uh, he's getting better. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Things are getting better. Haven't had a drink in uh, two weeks. This is not the worst podcast I've ever been on.
He's successful, mom and dad. <laughs> successful comedian. Said he's not the worst. And he drank for a long time. I did. And was still successful when he did it. <laughs> so look what I can this become. Is, this is not the message I am trying to convey. <laughs> I'm going to do more drugs. I'm going to fill myself with recreational drugs up to my eyes. We have very different reads on what this conversation was about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, thanks for joining us on Rumors Comedy Cast episode Had a great time. number 46. Um, Julian McCullough here till Saturday. Yes, Sunday. I'm going to I'm gonna sleep over Saturday, I think, and go home in the morning. Okay, At, like my place or like just in the condo? Condo's nice, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Sounds good. Uh, anything, anything breaking you want to share with us anything that uh oh yeah i have a i'm very excited i have a i have my own new podcast coming out called julian loves music if you've ever heard of doug benson he has a podcast called doug loves movies it's an institution everybody loves it i went to him and i said can i steal your idea and do it for music and he said sure so it's a game show podcast live in front of an audience about music and trivia and it's fun and stupid so that'll be coming out in early february julian awesome. loves music look it up and it'll be on itunes yeah, it'll be on all the things. Doug, film- Doug's, Doug's network is huge, so it'll be on there and everywhere else. It'll be filmed as well. It's, it's not... Uh, uh, I think he films some of them. Yeah. I, I'm not going to film mine for the first few, but when, I, once, when they get good, I'll start. Okay. One last thing. What's your jam right now, then? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, my favorite song of all time. I have one. You're yeah. not supposed to have a favorite song. That's <laughs> like a child has a favorite song. Um, Only You by Yaz have to look it up you're gonna have to you'll know it when you hear it foolish games jewel (laughs) beautiful like to cry that is also a song (laughs) that is also a song well thanks for joining us uh join us again next week or whenever we have another one of these uh come out and see julian he's here till sunday but doing shows till saturday thank you (laughs) 